Hello crafty friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video I'm going to be starting a brand new art journal and do what they call breaking in the first page. Now I'm using an, a book that I found in an op shop. It's not a limited edition book or anything that's quite rare so I'm quite happy to use a book like this. I know a lot of people um, get a little bit um, maybe sensitive to using books like this but um, I'll be using some of these pictures that you can see that are colored I'll maybe be using those in my art journaling but um, I'm quite happy to use this book for my art journal so for art journaling there's obviously no right and wrong way of doing anything it's a freedom of expression it's how you put your feelings onto a page and anything really goes the thing I like about art journaling is that if you do make what you think might be a mistake or something you're not happy with it can be easily covered up and just done over again I'm going to start by reinforcing the pages so I'm gluing three pages together just to make them harder and more sturdy and um, easier to work with. I'm just using a glue stick here, um, you can also use craft glue but anything really goes. I'm now going to start the beginning of my layering. I'm just using a page of text from a novel that I've also found in an op shop. I've decided to lay them sideways just for more interest. Now this doesn't really matter sort of what the text is or, or how you lay it down. It's sort of what is going to shine through when you finished all your layering. That's the part that I like. So we're going to put quite a few layers and in the end it doesn't matter the color that comes through it's more maybe just the design or the texture or the feel so here I'm using some spotted um, just cardstock and in the end you'll see that you can't really see the color anymore but just the spot shine through which is what I like I love layering and with art journaling you can do as much as you want or as little as you want I'm now going to apply a thin layer of white gesso. This is like a sealant or a primer that sort of prepares the page for painting. As you can see, this tub is nearly finished, but I'm using every last morsel. I'm just putting my paintbrush in some water and putting it through, just trying to get as much out as possible before I start my new tub. Now I'm leaving the layer quite thin so we can see the underneath print and designs that are shining through. I'm going to start the new tub now just for some other areas I want it a little bit thicker. I'm just using the top foil but I'm scraping off as much as I can. I don't like to waste. Um, and then I'm just putting some through. Some areas will be a little bit thicker, some a little bit thinner. Uh, more opaque it's really this really is however you want to do it and it's really a lot of fun when you see the results as you do each layer I have these flowers that are from a adult coloring in book that I'm going to use um, as part of my layering so I'm just going to fussy cut just three of them that I like and I'm going to paste them just randomly onto the page and then um, this will also you'll see in the end parts of it will shine through I use the word shine quite a lot but the only way I can explain it when you see the different layers and the different levels coming up to your final page um, and that's my favorite part of this process Some other things that you could use if you don't, for example, have a coloring in book or like a novel that you could tear up. You could also use um, just from the magazine. There's text in a magazine. There's big headings sometimes. There's um, designs. So also go through a magazine. You could use that. Sometimes you also get those free ones from the supermarket. So you don't even have to spend any additional money. Art journaling, art journaling sorry, doesn't have to be expensive. It can be with what you have. 
I'm pasting these down with some Mod Podge and then also covering the flower with Mod Podge. This once dry will allow me to paint over it and um, the paint will adhere. Make sure that you dry well between each layer. I'm now adding some more gesso over the flowers. I'm using my finger or a paintbrush, whatever you'd like to use. This is just to mute it down. I didn't want the black and white starkness sticking out. I wanted just the, the softness in the background. I'm now going to start with some color. I've started with some watercolor, which I'm not happy with because it's just too um, transparent. So I just wipe that down with the tissue and go for the acrylics. I'm using it directly from the tube. I'm quite happy just to use a green. I'm then going to add a little bit of white and sort of just mix it on the page. A little bit of yellow, trying to make it more of a lime color. You could sort of pre-think and get an idea of what color combination you'd like to use or you can just go with the flow as you're working just see what you want to do like i said you can always just cover it up or wipe it off so i'm quite happy with this green i'm smudging it through with my finger so some areas are quite thin and you can still see the underneath and some areas are making a little darker I'm now going to add my second color, which is a deep blue, which I really like just straight out of the tube. I'm just applying this with my finger again so I can get a really thin spread near the edges um, and it sort of blends in with the green. With the painting and the layers, some of the text has been totally covered, which I actually still wanted to show through. So I'm just adding another two pieces over the top of this. So I do get to see some text um, shining through. Covering that with a bit of gesso as well and just lightening up some of the areas. I'm going to use a stencil just to sponge some design into the background. I'm actually just using a makeup sponge and some black ink. Now the makeup sponge is the first time I'm using it, it's sort of all I had and I found that it did work but because it's quite absorbent a lot of the ink went into the sponge and not a lot, lot onto my page but in the end it did work and it's got a subtle light grey kind of design and I was quite happy with it so it was fine and I just kept it. I'm also stamping with my acrylic stamp it's just like a vintage handwriting it's one of my favorite stamps I use it in nearly all my projects I'm just stamping a little bit of that too with black ink. I'm now watering down a little bit of the black acrylic paint and I'm just going to splatter some of that onto the page. I'm also going to do the same with the blue acrylic paint. I'm 
I have these butterfly acrylic stamps that I'm stamping but they're very light and you can barely see them so I'm leaving them but they really don't add much to the page if they were a little bit darker it would have been better but I'm quite happy just to leave them very very faint I'm using a black gel pen to go all the way around the edging now in certain areas I'm doing a little bit of a squiggle so it sort of looks like stitching from a sewing machine where sometimes it catches and bunches up so I've done that here and there I do like that effect now I know there are some rubber stamps that do the same job I don't currently have those so I'm just using a pen and doing it myself Now you probably would have seen that a lot of art journaling pages have quotes or wording or poems. This by no means means that every single one of your art journal pages has to have this. You can just leave them plain, a lot of mine are plain. But I'm thinking because this is my very first page at the beginning of my art journal, I am going to put a quote. And I found one that actually had said music is an outburst of the soul but I've just changed the music to the word art so it's going to say art is an outburst of the soul and I'm going to put that as my front page of my art journal. The stamps that I'm using are really um, inexpensive ones that I found at um, like a two dollar shop. They not the best but they're doing the job and you could also hand write this, but I quite like the look of the stamp. It's sort of, the letter part isn't raised a lot. So it actually also stamps around the rubber that's around it, which I actually quite like. It gives it like a shadowy effect. So I think it works for the page. And you could also do this with magazine cutouts or like I say, handwriting. You could type it out, you could print it out, what, whatever you have. Um, anything really works. Because my background page is quite light and the wording is on white paper, it needs to stand out. So I'm just going to put it onto a black background. So there'll be a small black trim around each word so it stands out and pops from the background page. I'm not using a cutter to trim these, I'm just using a scissors because I don't want them exactly like lined up and straight. I like the bit of where it's uneven and makes it a bit more rough you could say or just more rustic <laughs> is maybe, that, uh, I'm not, not sure, quite sure what the correct word is but I don't want them to be even and straight. I want it to be more fun and um, flowy and freehand. I just spend a little bit of time just see how I'm going to place my words. I've tried down the center. I'm also trying to the far left. I'm trying with a little bit of lime green cardstock. I was going to put that sort of underneath the wording, but then I didn't like that. So eventually I decided to put them down the center of the page and I'm using the lime green paper and some pages from the novel to cut out little hearts that I'm going to add down next to the wording. So as you can see these are just hand cut. You don't need to have expensive embellishments or tools, just a piece of cardstock and a scissors and you can make flowers or hearts or anything really. It really can be with what you have. You don't have to have any fancy craft supplies.
I'm also adding a black frame around the heart like I did around the whole page. I'm just using, I think, a fine liner or the gel pen. I think I alternate between the two just to give them a little bit of, um, make them stand out a bit more. As you can see, the lines are not straight and that's done on purpose. I want them to be quite rough. Sometimes I actually use my non-dominant hand to do this because I actually specifically want it to be shaky and not perfect. For the little hearts that I've cut out from the book page, I'm just going to cover those in a thin layer of gesso as I think that sort of matches the page a little bit better and they will actually be easier to see. I'm using some black thread, it's just sewing machine thread, that I'm just going to cut a long piece, scrunch all up and just put underneath um, certain areas of the wording. This sort of just adds another level of texture and more interest and I think it needs something a little bit just underneath the wording otherwise it's a little too plain. I'm gluing everything down with craft glue. I have used this black cardstock before and I've been asked how it has a crossword puzzle at the back and it's actually a double sided Kazercraft 12 by 12 inch um, scrapbook paper. So the one side is black, it's got a very fine spot on that you can't really see in the video and the other side is a crossword puzzle. A little trick I use, because sometimes you'll do a, um, a section of your page where you've put a whole lot of embellishments and textures and before you glue it down, you sort of move everything off the page and then once you're there to try and glue back all the layers, you actually forget how you had put it in the first place and how you were happy with it. So I normally take a photo, which is what I did before I moved the hearts off the page just so that I can reference back to see where each heart was because I did like the placement and I was happy with it otherwise sometimes you do forget and then you got to start all over again um, or you've already glued it down and then you're not actually happy with what you've done. I'm just using a fine liner pen here just to go over the writing because I found it wasn't um, dark enough and it sort of wasn't standing out. So I'm just going to go over each letter by hand just to make it a bit more bold. And now I'm using some Tipex which is white correction fluid just to do some white splatters all over the page. 
just one final bit of drawing and there we're done my first page in my new art journal I'm just showing you a close-up so you can just see I'll use this for the last time the layers shining through you can see the the flower from the coloring in page the writing page um, all the different layers that comes through and I really really love that I'm quite happy with this page as my first page I do hope you enjoyed this video I hope you got some inspiration for your own art journal or your other craft projects um, I'd love it if you subscribed to my channel as I'll have more pages coming your way soon and thanks for watching and see you soon bye